Welcome to Monster Chats, presented by Monster VoIP, where we share the tools, methods, and best practices that business leaders use to build new connections, strengthen relationships, and impact sales and organizations of all shapes and sizes. If you have any questions that come up during today's episode, please text them to 424-378-6966. Please welcome the founder of Monster VoIP, your host, Colin Mitchell. All right. On today's episode, we're going to be talking with Michael Padone of Sales Buzz. Michael and I will be talking about the, what sales teams and their leaders should be doing during the pandemic and how the messaging in sales should change to adapt to the current situation. I'm Colin Mitchell, the host of Monster Chats and the founder of Monster Voip. Michael Padone has been a commission-only sales professional for 25 plus years. He has built his first company in 2002 and sold it in 2007 for 1.2 million. Then he created Sales Buzz to help companies get a higher ROI on their sales reps. Michael, welcome to Monster Chats. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it, glad to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Today we're gonna to talk about should sales reps slow down or double down during the pandemic? What leaders need to do differently to support their team during the pandemic? and what needs to change in their messaging. Before we really jump in here, Michael, tell us, tell us your story. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and kind of you know, how you got to where you're at today. That's probably more time than what we have. But so the, th <laughs> the bottom line is this, is that you know, um, I barely graduated uh, high school. I never went to college. And you know, I wanted to, you know, I, I grew up poor. I didn't want to stay doing that way. I knew one day when I had a family, I wanted to be, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that there's food on the table, nice neighborhoods, the car can start in the morning, you know, things like that. Some of the basic necessities. And uh, so I was always self-motivated to be better. I always feel that, you know, no matter what, what position you're in in life that you're born with, you know, that you can always be better. And I just always would want to improve and learn from those who were more successful than I was at the things that I wanted to be successful in. And then I just got to work, man. And then, so, you know, I got into sales and one of the things I love about sales is this, is that there's no, there's no, there's no ceiling, right? The better you are at sales, the more money you can make, and then you can live the lifestyle that you can dream of. I mean, I literally remember when I, um, when I was dating, who's my wife now of 20 plus years, you know, when we were dating, we used to drive through these nice neighborhoods where all the real fancy houses were. And she's yeah. like, what are we, what, what are we, what are we doing here? I would go to the open houses on Sundays. Uh -huh. Right. And she's like, what are we doing? Here? We're never going to be able to afford this. I go, I promise you, I'm going to buy you a house like this one day. We're going to be able to afford it. You know? So it's all about that visualization, but you have to have that internally. I understand that today's, you know, I think a lot of the millennials and people that, that today, they have their priorities in other areas, no right or wrong, right? Um, I noticed a lot of them, they want to be successful, but they also want to be happy at the same time. You know, they don't necessarily always need the fancy cars or the, you know, $10,000 timepieces or whatever, but they, they have other priorities. They'd rather save for a rainy day. That's totally cool. But whatever it is, you have to have the, the thing I like about a lot of the millennials I've been uh, talking with lately is the fact that they do have goals they write them down and they might be different than what i had you know as far as some of the the, the lifestyles and whatnot but the important part is you have to have some goals written down you have to have some something that desires that makes you happy that you have to strive for but because if you don't have that you you've got nothing you know right. so that always starts with that internal drive so yeah what i hear you saying is like you got to have something that you're chasing after right to yeah. get you to get up every day and, and and put in that hard work i mean that's sales yeah. right yeah. And for me, I literally grew up in, 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 you know, in a really bad part of the neighborhood and I didn't want that. So that's why that was, I was gravitated to, you know, back at the time, you know, you were going back 20 years ago when you see a, a $350,000 house, it was like a McMansion back then. You okay. know, so those are the kind of neighborhoods I was driving through, you know, so those are the things that I wanted, you know, and then we, we got there, you know, we ended up getting there. So it's, um, um, but it was all by hard work and desire and having those goals. And then and the thing I love about sales is, the better I got at selling and learning how to sell, the more money I was making. You know, right. that all starts with wanting to help people, right? That's your number one priority in sales. You gotta call and mm -hmm. see if you can help somebody. But the more people you can help get what they want, the more you can get what you want, the higher and the better you are at doing that, the higher your income level goes. And now money doesn't solve all problems, but it, uh, it definitely gives you more options. And, definitely and that's helps. a good thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so uh, tell me, you know, you know, with the current situation, everybody's pretty much, yeah. you know, working from home. 
lot of people are confused. They don't know what they should be doing, what they shouldn't be doing. Like, is it time to slow down or is it time to double down? So it really depends what stage you are in your life, right? I mean, obviously, if you've already accomplished most of your dreams and you're at the tail end, you're getting ready to retire anyway, you got a good nest egg, okay, maybe it's time just to chill out a little bit, right? But if you're not in that situation, if you're an SDR, you're a BDR, or you're a sales rep, uh, maybe you're a small business owner, right? Um, you you got to ramp up. And, and here's the thing. I don't just say that just to say it. I've been through the dot-com bubble. Matter of fact, you guys can remember that back in, if, if, if you don't, they just Google it, right? The dot-com bubble back in the 2000 to 2002. First yeah. of all, I started my first company in the middle of that when everything was going out of business, right? right. Then you had 9-11, right? And then, you know, you had in 2008, you had the housing crisis. I mean, so you had all these things that were going on that I've lived through as a straight commission sales rep. And I can tell you the only way to get out of this is to write your goals down and, and amp up the output. You got, you got to get, you got to get after it. You're going to hear, especially if you're in sales or if you're a small business owner, you're going to hear a lot more no's because there's a lot of people right. that are not, they're afraid that they might be battening down the hatches. They might be going out of business. So you're going to have to ramp up and get to more no's faster so you can get to that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I remember early on in sales for me, they told me, you know, you got to get a thick skin, you know, I think, you know, cause you're going to get a lot of no's and um, you know, but the problem is like, you can't let the no's deter you from your goal. Right. It, so there's a fine line here, right? Because we've all been taught that in sales, you have to have thick skin, but the problem with most sales training and, and, and people that teach other people how to sell in the beginning in their first career, they're teaching them bad. They don't know it, but they're teaching them things that are going to cause them to get more no's. Like, so their messaging is really screwed up right in the beginning. So then sure. I mean, you could, you can amp up the output, but you also want to improve your technique because if you just amp up the output and you're making bad mistakes, you're just going to get, you know, you're just going to improve that rejection even more. Right. right. So we already know with today's economy that you're going to hear no's because a lot of the people are not buying right now, or some of them are, or the ones that we're going to buy, they're holding off. But that doesn't mean there's not people out there that are not buying, but you have to fix your messaging as well. That first 10 to 15 seconds to capture their attention and get a conversation going. If you do it wrong, you can make a thousand calls and get a thousand no's and you can have the thick skin all you want, but you're, 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 you, burnout's going to happen in right. that scenario. And I mean, you've been doing sales a long time and mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen things that have changed a lot, right? I mean, some of the basic fundamentals may be the same, but I mean, have you seen a lot of things change? What used to work doesn't work. Can you talk a little bit about that? So this is, this is so funny. I see all the time that thing, the sales process changed. The sales process never changed since the very first thing that was ever sold on this planet. The process is literally the same, meaning you start with a problem. They have to recognize a problem. Once they recognize a problem, then they can go through the process of, of finding a solution. The sales process, if you're cold calling, the sales process is the same today as it was 20 years ago. If you're doing, if you're getting inbound leads, which is a warm lead, which is the real correct definition of a warm lead, by the way, where there's a hand raiser. Uh, I only put that as an asterisk because I even saw yesterday, like LinkedIn says, don't make cold calls anymore. Use our LinkedIn navigator, which I love, by the way, I use yeah. it myself, but they're saying, but they say, don't make cold calls anymore. Research your prospect. Well, listen, you can do all the research you want on a prospect. Yeah. That doesn't warm it up for them. When you call them, it's still cold. So a right. true inbound or a warm lead is when they're raising their hand. With that being said, whether it's a cold lead or a warm lead, the sales process is exactly the same. Right. Where people try to make it sound like the, the, when they write their fancy books or their, their, their slide decks for you to fill out the form so they capture the lead, they're saying the sales process has changed, learn this new way. They're, they're, they're not being 100% honest. The, it's easier now to get a hold of a prospect. It's easier to find information out about them, but the sales process, you still have to pick up the phone and call them. It's still the same from that, from that aspect of it. Right. So with what I'm saying, what I hear you saying is like the process is the same, right? But more like the tools that are available, you know, have changed. Oh my God. Um, Absolutely. You know, that. Yeah. You know, Agreed. What, what, you know, tools have changed, you know, you can get, you know, people's emails in a matter of seconds when you, you mm -hmm. didn't used to. Um, you know, you can use things like video or LinkedIn or, you know, email and the phone. I'm still a big fan of the phone, obviously, <laughs> for reasons. Um, yeah. And, you know, I see 
uh, people, some people are using the phone less, but it's actually extremely powerful. I've seen like right now during this time that the connection rates are actually higher. Like people are picking yeah. up calls because they're at home, you know, calls are getting forwarded to cell phones and things like that. So yeah. like right now is a great time to be using the phone. Well, it's also, it's, it's an, oh, it's an old crap moment too, because all that low hanging fruit isn't there. So people are going, I got to pick up the phone. I got to call somebody to get business going. Right. But, yeah. but here's the thing, um, you know, the video and all that stuff, there's a lot of people that will tell salespeople to self brand themselves. I, I think it's really ridiculous unless you're an SME, a subject matter expert. Like for me, it's important to do things like this and, and get my message out through video and things of that nature. But if I have 10 sales reps hitting the phones, my job is to make sure they have a pipeline of leads to call, not to be on social media and, 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 and trying to generate business that way, if that makes sense at all. So there's a, there's a fine line on, 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 on who's supposed to be doing what. I still believe that marketing is supposed to like generate some stuff and the salespeople are supposed to know how to handle it. Right. But there's also more of like a convergence of sales and marketing these days. Don't you see a lot of that? So it really, it, again, it really depends on what it is. If you're a small business and you're the, uh, I call it an SME, a subject matter expert, like you'll see right. me write blogs, you'll see me do podcast interviews, all this other stuff, but I also right. pick up the phone. Right. But again, I wouldn't want my sales reps doing a podcast interview or, or anything of that nature because they're not the subject matter expert. So when you, if you use it in that aspect, it, it's, it, that's why I say it's a fine line. It really depends. There's a lot of companies like, um, let's just take outreach, for example, right? They're one of the biggest companies out there or mm -hmm. Salesforce. They have their top people that are generating leads. They have a whole team of sales reps that are really supposed to be just following up on those leads or making those calls. And you really need to make sure that those skills are perfected before you want them to start, you know, using social media to try to generate their own leads. Because here's the biggest problem. A lot of times people think that they can generate leads, not through the phone, but through social media. But when they actually get the interaction going, they don't know what to do. They just think, well, if they like me, they'll buy me. And that's not the case. If you get an interested prospect just because they saw something and they interacted with you on social media, but you don't know how to ask the right questions, how to engage with them, how to really find what the pain points, how to get them to articulate what the problem is. They might not even know what the problem is. If you don't know how to ask the right questions and then you just you know, think that they're going to buy because they like you because they, they you know, connected with you on, on some social outlet, you're going to miss a lot of deals. So it really yeah. comes back to the fundamentals first. Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, we may have a little different of opinion on that and that's okay. But, you know, I think I'm a, more of an advocate of self-branding, right? I think that, you know, if, if, you know, sales is more personal, right? I mean, like there, you gotta have, you gotta know your sales foundation, your process, which is what you're, you know, talking about. Um, but also, you know, people buy from people that, that they like versus that they don't like as well. Now, if you're missing on the sales process and the discovery and finding the problem, then absolutely. Um, you're going to miss yeah. those sales, but your branding and your social media tactics aren't enough uh, uh, alone to win you the business. Yeah. I mean, you have to listen, if you're in sales, you have to be likable as it is right. And no matter what. So, but the problem is this, you're not the only person that's selling what you're doing. You're not the only person branding yourself. Right. So what if they like three different people who's going to get the business? Let's say you're all selling the same product. Right. You know what I mean? You still have to know how to engage with, with those things. And the, the, the biggest thing is this. I just think that first, let's just get this out of the way. Cold calling, whether it's cold calling or just phone sales in general is really hard. Oh yeah. It's, it, it, it's, but the thing is this, it's, it's really hard if you don't know what you're doing. And the, I'm going to say the majority of people don't know what they're doing. So then they, they'll read a headline or they'll see a book or they'll see somebody promoting, hey, don't cold call, do it this way. And they buy it hook, line and sinker, not realizing that the person that's making that recommendation couldn't sell to save their ass anyway. And so now you're, you're going down a path that you're going to find out in six months didn't work for you either, even if you went that way. Right. So, I mean, social media is more just to get top of funnel, right? So it's to get people engaged, right? And if your sales that's process right. is not meeting the mark, then yeah. Right. So what that's, can, that's, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what, what can, what can leaders be doing differently right now to support their teams during this situation? Yeah. So, so let's get back. So with the current the state of this craziness that we're in with this coronavirus thing, right? So a lot of people working from home things. That I think the number one thing that sales leaders have to do is to, they have to celebrate the wins. Um, and what I mean by that is, yeah. When, when business is normal, and, and let's face it, the last couple of years, business has been booming, right? The economy has been doing really crazy well. 
And so there's a lot of low hanging fruit and things of that nature and everybody's having a good time, but you were really expected to hit your quota. And if you didn't, there was going to be some uncomfortable conversations, right? So right. now people might not be expected to hit the quota. So you can't, you can't treat them the same way with things that are going on, you, you know, and, and that aspect. So I think you got to flip the funnel in that aspect and celebrate the wins. When somebody does get, you know, a deal to come in, or if they do get close, or they do hit their quota, right? You know, that has to be celebrated rather than um, looked upon as like if you didn't hit it. So I just really think celebrate the wins. Who knows? Maybe when this thing's all over, some management will will stick to that style. Right. You know what I mean? So and celebrate like, the wins. What I hear you saying, like being a little more forgiving of they don't hit quota right yeah. now because it's. I yeah. mean, people don't know how um, to manage this situation, right? Nobody's had to deal with anything like this before. Um, right. Yeah. This was, this is a bad one. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we're going to take a quick second to just to tell you a little bit about what monster VoIP does. We help companies save 30 to 50% off their current business phone bill and we provide them more value and features. If you want to learn more, you can text us at 424-378-6966. We're talking with Michael Padone here from sales buzz. And we've talked about, you know, it, whether you should slow down or double down during the pandemic, we've talked about how, the leaders can support their sales reps during this time. And now we're going to talk a little bit about the messaging, you know, the messaging that was working before the pandemic, is that messaging still working? What needs to be changed or adapted to that messaging? What's, what's your opinion on that, Michael? Yeah, well, it depends. I mean, if it depends on how you're doing it. If you had a really good opening value statement when you're picking up the phone and calling somebody and it was working then, it should still work now. However, I have added, I've added a change to mine recently. But then again, most most sales reps, let me just say this, most sales reps that are before the pandemic, their opening value statement sucked. That's why they were hearing, no thanks, not interested, we're all set, I already used somebody, have something that does that already. Right. So they were in all, they were using the wrong opening value statement. Uh, for me, uh, I'm very confident in the opening value statements that I use, the formula that I use. Uh, I have modified it for this scenario because this is something that every person in the world knows about the coronavirus. I don't care who you are. We're all, it's all on all of our minds, but you don't want to call and start talking about that and get sidetracked on thinking that and not talking about what you're doing. I know a lot of people say use it to build rapport. I'm not, a, if you can't tell, I'm not a big, let's falsely build rapport guy. I'll let the right. rapport happen nat naturally as the conversation goes. So here's my opener and it's been working extremely well. I call somebody, I'll do the quick introduction. Hey, it's Michael Padone with Sales Buzz. Uh, you know, how are you? They'll say fine, good. And I listen, some crazy times we're in right now. Yeah, it sure is. I'll go, well, listen, I have, m most of my clients are really in two camps right now. One camp is like battening down the hatches. They're not even sure if they're going to be open in a month. Yeah. And the other camp, they're 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 really they're getting ready to uh, for the rebound. They're reloading and they're really going ahead and taking this opportunity to improve their system so that they can uh, be ready once everything gets back to normal. I'm just curious, wh which camp are you in right now? Yeah, I think that's like really genuine, right? It's like, hey, yeah, not acknowledging the situation and just saying, hey, you're either this or you're that. Let me know so I kind of know how to proceed, right? Because yeah. there's a lot of people that are doing what people are calling fake empathy, like calling people that they've never talked to, have no relationship and talking about, Hey, how is your family? How are you doing? They don't even know if they have yeah. family, you know, yeah. and that's, that doesn't work because it's not genuine. Um, and, 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 and I think that, you know, what you're saying is like people all are aware of the situation, acknowledging it is okay. Um, but creating some sort of like fake rapport is really not going to work because people are going to see through that. That's right. Exactly. Couldn't send it better myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, I think that, um, the, I think the messaging for what you're saying for the most part pretty much stays the same as long as you have a solid value proposition that you've been using that's been working, you know, yeah. it, adding in to acknowledge the situation. And if the prospect wants to elaborate on that, cool. Um, but not, you know, being disgenuine. And here's the benefit. So when you do it, first of all, I have, if some of you, first of all, a lot of salespeople were under a tremendous amount of pressure normally. Now we're all under a tremendous amount of pressure because we, you know, listen, we don't know if we're gonna be able to pay the, the, the mortgage or the rent or car payment next month, right? Because of everything that's going on. So here's the thing. You always want to make your sales calls with the intent. Let me just call and see if I can help. If you really want to get rid of car reluctance, 
just don't try and think, hey, I got to call this this name on, in my CRM or on this paper or whatever. I said, I just want to call see if I can help them. So you start with that mentality. Right. It's really hard when you don't know if you're going to have enough money at the end of the month to, to pay your bills and you got a family to support, right? So the thing I've learned all along, and, and I've been doing this for a long time, like I said, I've been through the ups and downs of recessions and things of that nature. One thing that always helped me is this. I always, if I found that I was having a hard time getting my tone right, my intention and my tone right, I would start to visualize before I call, I would pretend that the person I'm about to call is a relative of a friend of mine and that friend asked me to call them. Yeah. So what it does, it helps put me in the right mindset of, of to help, not sell. So that's yeah. how I get my tone right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so if, you, if you do it that way and you have that, and then eventually, because like I said, that pressure can come in where you really want a deal. It's almost like in sports, whether if it's in baseball or if it's in hockey, if like, if they're not scoring, they, it's called, they squeeze the stick too much, right? They're like, squeeze, yeah. they're trying too hard. You just got to let it come yeah. to you. You know, you got to yeah. get it off your plate. It's the same scenario. Yeah. I love that. Um, you know, getting your mindset right before the call, right? Because yeah. um, what you say is so important, but how you say it is too, right? Absolutely. And, and if, in, in the prospect on the other line of the phone, if, if it's not a video conference and they can't see your facial expressions, right. It's just over the phone. Then, you know, they still can sense that desperation if that's what you're Absolutely. Calling, right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So you, and you just say, look, I'm calling to see if I can help. And then you just have a good opener, but then also too, you <laughs> This is the problem. You have to know what the next step is after the opener. Cause if once you start using the right opener, you're going to have a lot of people go, yeah, I got a second, go ahead. And now you're like, damn, what do I do next? Right. Right. They're almost like shocked because they're not used to hearing yes. Right. Yeah, exactly. So you have, that's where the sales process comes, you know, really comes into play. Yeah. They're like, uh, I don't know. That's not in my script. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, we're, we're almost out of time here, but before, uh, before we let you go, tell us something, you know, personal about yourself that people maybe don't know. Um, anything, you know, what's your favorite app? What's on your playlist? You know, I know you're a guitar shredder. Uh, yeah. So, um, before I met my wife, I was, I was, um, putting my name in the hat to be Ozzy Osbourne's next guitar player. So I was oh, waiting okay. on that call. Yep. So that's, that's one, but, uh, the first, uh, let's go way deep, something really personal. The first beer I ever had. How about that? Who sure. I had it with? Um, one of my, I have two, my two favorite bands is first of all, ACDC is my number one favorite band right behind them is Judas all Priest. Right. Uh, the lead singer, Rob Halford, I think is the best heavy metal singer in the world. And I was 14. I had a band in Phoenix and we had a chance to meet him at this place. And, uh, that's who I had my first beer with sat down. We were talking about music and, uh, had my first beer with Rob Halford, the metal God. Awesome. Um, so tell us how, Michael, how can people find you? Um, you know, if they want to sure. find out more about sales buzz or anything. Yeah. The two easiest ways is uh, salesbuzz.com. Uh -huh. You can go there you can even take a free course, you know, on demand, things of that nature. You can learn more about the programs that we have, but also on LinkedIn. If you just look me up at Michael Padone on LinkedIn, you'll find me there and I'll be more than happy to connect with you. Awesome. Uh, we're out of time today. Uh, Michael, thanks so much for your investment today. We welcome you to the Monster Chats community. Um, cool. if, you're list if, if you're listening to the podcast, please subscribe, review, and share. We're listening. Welcome. We welcome your feedback, and the show is all about you. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Monster Chats, presented by Monster Voip, where we share the tools, methods, and best practices that business leaders use to build new connections, strengthen relationships, and impact sales in organizations of all shapes and sizes. If you have any questions from today's show and want to reach us directly, please text your question to 424-378-6966.